All right, everybody, welcome back to the channel. It's been a minute. Um, technically, lost a subscriber, but that's okay. Um, that subscriber was actually my other channel, <laughs> um, which ended up getting deleted. That's unfortunate. So we're back down to 49. So congrats to the 49 of you that are here. Now, let's talk about the XFL. Week three is here, right around the corner, just a little bit more. Um, to recap about week two, um, the ratings did go down a little bit. Um, it was to be expected at this point, no, uh, but it was a, still a strong weekend nonetheless. Still, um, the XFL had some of the top events of this past weekend. Um, I got a couple of numbers right here 2.3 million on Fox. 1.4 million on FS1. That's a big one. That's a key one right there because there's going to be some games that are going to be on FS1 later on. And they're going to be like, oh, okay. Yeah, these games are here. Um, I don't I forget what the ESPN ratings were and what well, the ABC games were. I forget what those were because there was no game on ESPN this week. Uh, but yeah, mostly, you know, it went down a little bit, but it's okay. It's fine. Uh, we'll see what week three does. I think. This is the point now where it's like, okay, this is where things are going to be like for the rest of the season. At least until March Madness comes around, because March Madness could take away even more viewers uh, from the XFL. But there's a lot of football-hungry people, um, so, you know, it is what it is. But week three is here, and trying to... Trying to see what the world's going on here, cause um, there, there, there's gotta there's gotta be something there's gotta be something to give here for some of these teams already. But we all know that the Roughnecks and the DC Defenders they are looking very very good right now. Um, but this week we have um, a lot interesting games and first up is the Houston Roughnecks taking on the Tampa Bay Vipers and that's going to be very interesting they have Vipers haven't scored a touchdown on offense Vipers defense has looked the greatest at times um, and, the, and the Roughnecks are rolling with PJ Walker and Cam Phillips um, and that run and shoot baby and it's going to be very interesting to see what in the world Tampa Bay does. Who in the world's going to be the quarterback? Is it going to be Taylor Cornelius? Is it going to be Quentin Flowers? Is it going to be Aaron Murray? Because um, I really don't know right now for the Vipers. Uh, but could PJ Walker be the XFL MVP? Who knows? We'll find that out as the season progresses. But this could be an easy game for Houston. Maybe not. The spread here is six and a half in favor of the Roughnecks, so that's basically what I'm reading off of, and the second game is going to be the Dallas Renegades taking on the Seattle Dragons, Dallas finally got a big W last week, we needed that W after losing to the Battle Hawks, and we got a W in all the right ways against LA, but um, I think, again, it's just going to be the same kind of improvement that we been needing to do before, um, you know, as far as the Renegades offense goes, that air raid that Hell Mummy has is just very interesting to watch. And, you know, it did not really go too well in the first couple of quarters, but you know, once the run game, it really, it wasn't, it really didn't go too well at all, to be completely honest. Because Artis Payton was just like, mm, well, I'll run in for a couple touchdowns myself. So, you know, it's been very interesting to see how in the world. The dynamic of this offense is going to be so. Uh, the dragons, the dragons on the other hand, they are. They are also going to be at home for this game, like they did last week against Tampa Bay. Speaking of which, Tampa Bay's home debut is this week, so is St. Louis's. So we'll talk about St. Louis in a minute. Uh, but the dragons, they they got an ugly W against the Vipers last week, and Brandon Zupas is still doing. He's still doing okay. All the rest of the offense. Um, so it was seven of eighteen for ninety-one yards, and it, it was and it was just that one touchdown play that really, you know, 
not really uh, suede things, but the other the other, the other stuff the Brent Simmons has been doing, like throwing uh, pick six or not playing up to you know very good, um, you know it's it has to change if Seattle wants to get a W, and I think you know it's going to be a test fit to see what the what's going to happen. In the meantime. The largest spread of the season, based on what I'm looking at here, is the 9.5 point favorite St. Louis Battlehawks at home for the first time this year, taking on the New York Guardians. Um, so I don't know what in the world the Guardians are going to be like this week because they looked great on defense in week one, not so much in week two, especially on offense. But, um,. It's not great for Matt McGloin last week. 8 of 19, 44 yards, and a couple of picks. Um, and on the other side of things, you know, I mean, on the other side of things, Jordan Tayamu has just been absolutely fantastic. You know, it, it, it's, it's, been, it's been great. But um, it should be interesting to see what St. Louis is going to put out there. I think the upper decks are closed at the old dome down there in St. Louis. Um, so it'll be hopefully 30,000 that show up to the game. At least that that's what the capacity is supposed to be, 30,000. And St. Louis is, is probably very glad to have football back um, up there, down there in Missouri. <laughs> but <clears throat> the final game of the which is uh, the DC defenders who are an eight point favorite over the LA Wildcats and the LA Wildcats have not looked very good DC again has looked great you know Cardell Jones has just been doing what he doing what he wants when he's throwing the ball very well and I think I think he's only thrown like one interception all season but um shot Ross Eli Rogers man those are some good receivers right there let me tell you right there um and, I mean, it's just going to be, you know, what, what, what in the world is going to happen? Josh Johnson's here, could be here to stay for um, L.A., but who knows what's going to happen there. Um, L.A. just needs to improve on defense, offense, every, they need to improve on every facet of the game. And especially the defense, though, you know, defense does not look the greatest. Yeah, yeah they had... They had Dallas on the ropes for the longest time. Once it came to time for the fourth quarter, and Dallas came up with like 20 points in the fourth quarter. You can't have that if you want to win L.A. You can't have that. And I believe L.A. is at home for this game. So this will be the first time we get to see D.C. on the road. So it will be very interesting to see that. And I think the most important thing is that, you know, what in the world are the ratings going to look like for week three, what are they going to look like going forward? Um, the quality of play is obviously not NFL level, but it is fantastic. It is fantastic enough to where I can say, hey, this will survive for however long it needs to survive, however long, however long, you know, the McMahon family has money, and however long, you know, people can, you know, get some things going. Um, there's also another little interesting tidbit. I think it's like a little rumor somehow. Um, there's up this belief that there's going to be a Philadelphia team in the near future along with like other teams. There's like 21 trademarks out there. Um, it's going to be very interesting to see what in the world's going to happen there as far as you know, new teams in the XFL. I don't think the XFL should expand right away. The expansion right away just signals just smells like doom right there it smells like it's not gonna work if you expand too quickly as we've seen it in plenty of other leagues so we don't have to we don't have to go into detail about those other leagues but you know um, so yeah that'll basically do it for this video everyone um, XFL's here week three is here and you know it's, it's finally time. Finally time to see what's going to happen. I should edit that out, but I'm not. 
But yeah, see you guys in the next video, everybody.